Well, we're finally getting some details on uh, the uh, Charger appliance that uh, Stellantis thinks that people still want. Good luck with that. The um, the whole the whole EV thing is coming apart, and <laughs> it looks like Stellantis is going to jump headfirst into this with this uh, announcement of actual real pricing because it got leaked uh, last week. Uh, people like OC Motivator, I'll put his video right there, uh, you know, released from uh, the dealers what these things were going to cost, and we didn't have any details on it. Now they did a press release, and oh, dear Lord, um, <laughs> good luck. That's all I have to say is good luck. So let's dive into this um, <clears throat> announcement. Dodge brand announces official pricing for all new 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona Banshee GTRT appliance, whatever. Dodge Charger uh, Daytona two-door to launch with high-performance model. Uh, 2024, I love how they try to call it a 2024 to 2025. It may be out by December. Maybe. Last time I looked, the 2025s get launched in August. Like for, you know, the next year is launched in August. This is not a 2024. This is gaslighting by Stellantis to show that they didn't have a break, which they did. They haven't made a, they haven't made a Charger or a Challenger since December of last year. And it's now August when I'm recording this, August 8th. <clears throat> Two-door models launched with standard direct connection. Stage one upgrades installed at the factory at a starting U.S. manufactured retail price, MSRP, of 59595 plus two grand in destination. So it's $62,000. For the base appliance. And it comes and see, this is where they're 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 doing the old switcheroo because it's gonna come with the direct connection stage one upgrade that gives you 496 horsepower and four or four foot pounds of torque. So there's the switcheroo because next year they're gonna charge for that. And it's an electric appliance, they could take it away. That uh, that is 100%. It is all software driven. So that can be removed. And you have no control over that. Tesla does that. They can just take an option away from you. And make you pay for it annually. So let, keep that in mind. That this is all a come on at this point. The inaugural year Dodge Charger Daytona Scat Pack. <laughs> Banshee, RT, whatever. Whatever. Uh, two-door includes track package and factory-installed direct connection stage two upgrade, resulting in total output of 670 horsepower and 627 foot-pounds of torque. Zero to 60 in a paltry 3.3 seconds, considering Teslas for the same price will run you uh, around two seconds, zero to 60. And that's all they're good for is straight line. This all this good for it because it weighs 6,000 pounds. Six thousand pounds that is more than an x5 that i mean this is this is more than every big cadillac from the heyday so that's why it's so slow zero to 60 with all that torque uh 11 and a half second quarter mile which is really um not that fast it really isn't the, the quarter quarter mile time is actually quite uh disappointing considering this has a stage two in it i can go get a durango with the uh hellcat engine in it and i will dust that thing absolutely just embarrass it uh, the, any any tesla high performance will absolutely embarrass this in a quarter mile this is actually kind of this is sad and all of that mediocrity will start at 73 plus two grand in shipping seventy five thousand dollars no options, just the base car, 75 grand. The 2024 <laughs> Dodge Charger RT two-door and Daytona Scat Pack two-door, the first all-electric vehicles from Dodge, qualify for a full $7,500 federal tax credit when leased. So like Klaus Schwab says, you'll own nothing and you like it. 
because you if you buy this, you don't get that credit. So if you pay, if you just borrow it and pay out the nose for borrowing the car, which probably is a good thing in an electric appliance, that's when you get the credit. Otherwise, you don't. Excellent. And how do you how do you build depreciation to a vehicle that depreciates at least 50 percent in one year? Because that's what electrics do. They plummet the first year. It's it, it, this is the scam is just beautiful. I, I digress. I'm sorry. All 2024 Dodge Charger models, including choice of a, at home level two charging station, which is pretty slow or 600 charge credits through free to move charge. So you have to drive somewhere to get this thing charged. What's that going to get you like five charges, six charges, maybe. Yay. Uh, <laughs> remember the, the, the big, the big dog in this, the, uh, this, the scat pack has maybe a 200 mile range. I mean, if you drive it with any type of anger, 200 mile range that, and you can only go 80% of that. So now you're talking like 160 miles. I, I don't see, I, I, people, I know people with Hellcats that get 22 miles to the gallon on the highway all day long. And if they play with it, they get 18 and they, what, they have an 18 gallon tank. I mean, that's still farther than these things can go and they could fill up in 10 minutes at most. That's including getting off the highway, stopping, but I'm digressing. Um, <clears throat> so here's the big thing. The gas powered two door charger, six pack ho. And four-door Dodge Charger six-pack. So models are scheduled to begin production in second half of 2025. So over a year from now, you'll have gas-powered Hurricane Chargers, and you can't get a high-performance four-door. You can only get a high-performance two-door, and you can't get a regular-performance two-door. You have to only get a high-performance four two-door. And God knows what those are going to cost. I mean, we're probably the two-door is probably going to be 80 grand. And the four door is probably going to be 50. That's a far cry from what we have right now. And, and, and honestly, and they're not coming out for a while. And this is why in this video, I said that Dodge is pretty, pretty close behind Chrysler into the going to the dustbin of history, because this this is not a product mix that's going to save this company. You have nothing else, nothing else to sell because uh, nobody wants to horn it. That should be killed by next year. And the Durango. I imagine it'll re be rebadged as a RAM. They have nothing. Customers can view dealer allocation of the 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona models at Dodge Horsepower Locator. So it's doing this nonsense again. Starting in third quarter of 2024, which we're in right now. So they're going to be starting this nonsense. They're probably going to try to jack the prices up on this. Good luck. Uh, good luck, dealers. Good luck. Because they'll just go down the Tesla and pay what the what it says on the thing. Um, <clears throat> so that's the that, that was the thing of it. So the Dodge, the you know, the the 2024 Dodge Charger RT was starting U.S. manufacturing. Just real the price of fifty nine. You know, we've gone over the pricing. The future of the Dodge brand launches <laughs> with two model 2024, 2025. Uh, Dodge Charger two door lineup that looks, drives, sounds, and feels like a Dodge. No, it does not. Outperforming the legendary models, replacing, delivering the experience that Dodge Brotherhood of Muscle expects, uh, said Matt McClare, um, Dodge brand chief executive officer. So I guess he's the new guy who's the new propaganda man. And we're just getting started. Four door Charger Daytona models, along with 550 horsepower Dodge Charger six pack hose. And 420 Dodge Charger six pack SOS fueled by the three liter twin turbo Huracan engine are coming soon, which is a lie. That's a year from now. That is not soon. Uh, the next generation of Dodge muscle cars has arrived and they are flat out the best muscle cars ever made. Goebbels would be proud of this, uh, uh, of this spin. This is propaganda at its worst. Uh, I. I, I don't even, I can't even believe they're saying this with a straight face. There's no way he said that with a straight face. Uh, the new all new Dodge Charger Daytona features an all electric 400 volt dual motor system delivering muscle car performance through standard all wheel drive. 
mechanical limited slip differential in the world's first patent pending Fratonic chambered fake sound exhaust. Good Lord. In addition to key standard features, all Dodge Trotters include hidden hatch, power shot, whatever, uh, one pedal. So you drain your power even faster. They get 40 horsepower for 15 seconds. It means you must drain the power immediately. One pedal driving, uh, driver focused interior with a giant screen in the middle, which I don't understand how it's driver focused. Drive modes, auto, echo, sport, wet snow, and valet on RT. Doesn't say on the other one. Heated front seats with eight way adjustment, pistol grip shifter, <laughs> nine speaker Alpine radio, uh, keyless go push button, uh, safety equipment. And, Automatic emergency braking, active lane management, active blind spot, blah, blah, all the, all, all the nannies that you just hate on every new car. Uh, two trims, the Daytona, two-door design with performance buyers in mind, and the scat uh, iconic RT and scat pack badges. Uh, the Daytona RT, Banshee, SE, whatever. That's all right. We've gone over its details. They keep on repeating the details. And, you know, back again with the with, you know, they're giving you the level two for free, which God knows what they're going to charge for that next year. They're going to take a loss on this. You have your drive modes. You have race option donut mode, which just allows you to spend a lot of money and burn up tires. Drift mode. Uh, line lock launch control race prep because everybody's going to go to the. Yeah, to track racing with a six thousand pound car. I mean, you're gonna in, you're gonna absolutely annihilate a set of tires in one track day. Performance displays, you get a heads up, and there's the details on the track package, which is basically uh, six piston front and four piston rear brakes, twenty by eleven front wheels, big big. 305, 3, 3520s, and the back 325, 35R30s. All season tires. A spoiler and dual valve adaptive dancing, damping suspension. Uh, and of course, the upgraded interior. And the options, just the plus group. So it's five grand on top of that to get leatherette low back bucket seats with ventilation in the RT, leather high back with ventilation on the scat pack. So you don't get leather. But those prices, you don't get leather. So you got to spend five grand more to get leather. Uh, you get a uh, premium IP and door trim panels, 16 inch color driver display, deluxe security alarm. Why? It's an electric thing. Just unplug it, it won't go anywhere. A attitude adjustable lighting, heads up display, a frunk. While Wait a minute. So you don't get a frunk? You spend 62 grand and you don't get a frunk. Wait a minute. Let me wait. You don't get a frunk. $62,000 and there's no frunk. <laughs> there's no place to put anything. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, oh my God. Oh, uh, the black top, another grand. You just, it's, it's basically a dress up package with sport, but still with all season tires. Sun and sound. You get a glass roof so you can bake in the sun. An 18-speaker Alpine Pro audio system. Carbon and suede with the scat pack. Three grand more. So you get leather suede, high back performance seats, carbon fiber inserts, suede, dark badging, and much and much more additional content. So they don't even know what is included in this. They're just going to get more with that. This is more. Uh, 305, and then the, the, the three side season tires, you get F1 supercar. And then, of course, uh, the level two charging, which is still slower than slow. And then some sort of freedom move charge, uh, some sort of Solantis run thing, which probably will run out of money. Yeah, uh, arriving in dealerships Q4, we'll see. And next year will be the Daytona. Okay, so this is this is um, the propaganda for this. So let's actually go and take a look at how much money Ford loses right now 
on on Mach-E's, which is a $60,000, $50,000, $60,000 car. Much simpler. They lost one hundred and thirty grand on every EV they sold in the first quarter this year. So I don't know how this is a good plan. There's no way that Stellantis is going to make money on these EVs, especially with all this nonsense they're putting in here. And I just don't understand Ford, you know, who, who went and did this with, and were first to market with this. They're getting destroyed. And in fact, you know, Ford just, they, they, they're they not going to do electric vehicles in their Oakville plant. They're going to actually make money. They're going to build F-Series. That's just a little side note. So let's go look right now at chargers. Um, okay. So, so I did a little search around. So this is everything above uh, 370 horsepower. Okay. Everything above 300, like 370 horsepower. So there's like over 120 chargers of RT and higher, right? RT and higher. And, and most of them are in the, most of them are cheaper than both these cars. Okay. And they can be fueled up in minutes. So I went and I picked the most expensive one, you know, a regular scat pack, non Hellcat. And it's this, it's a scat pack wide body. It's $72,000. But this car has $20,000 in options. I mean, this is a loaded, 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 loaded car. Loaded, absolutely loaded. And it's this is a fast car. This is a scat pack car. This is going to be just as fast as, especially in the quarter mile, it is, it is neck and neck with that electric appliance. And you get a lot more with it. And you can fuel it up anywhere. And then here, this is the Challengers, and there's a lot of them. There's a lot of Challengers available. This is just around 100 miles around Tampa. There's 300 of them that are RTing up still. And obviously, most of these are actually even cheaper for a two door, which is what the Charger thing appliance is. And they're around 50,000, most of them. So you can honestly get a car for many thousand che cheaper and you don't have to do any weird stuff at home to make sure you can power it. And I pulled this one out. This was a loaded one, $68,000. But this car is once again, $19,000 in options. I mean, this is a loaded car and it won't depreciate 50% in the first year. This is actually a very desirable car. And it's a, you know, it's an RT scat pack wide body. So, I mean, I don't understand it. Good, uh, you know, good luck because with the pricing information, there's no way these things are selling and there's no way Dodge is surviving. Not, not, not if you're going to wait a year to release the gas motored cars, what are these dealers going to do? Cause eventually those chargers and challengers are going to run out or they have to start giving them away because they're going to be a year old. They're already a model year old. They're 2023s and we're in 2024. Almost 2025. So these dealers are going to be suffering because they have no Chrysler products to sell. There's nothing except the minivan. They have ancient chargers and challengers laying around. They have appliances coming in, which I don't know what they're going to do with that. The Ram trucks don't sell because no one, they have terrible quality. I did that in another video where it's quality. Software. Nobody's very sure about this new a Turrican motor because it's new. All the other manufacturers have very proven engines in their trucks. Jeep is a flaming dumpster fire at this point with recalls and quality issues that just are not helping the brand. Plus they're getting hurt by Bronco and by Tacoma, you know, Toyota having a launch of real off-roading. And so now this is what we got. And I don't see, uh, once again, with, with this information, I just don't see Dodge surviving. I just don't. It, it, it It's over. It is literally, Stellantis is going to absolutely have to do something drastic, but they're not going to. They're hell-bent on electric cars, and uh, they like appliances because they're European, They don't, and they don't really care. And why does this matter to me, somebody that loves the old cars? Because when the brand goes away, the copyrights and the intellectual property 
still is owned by Stellantis. Ask people with Plymouths about trying to get reproduction parts. They don't exist anymore, but you can't buy it. Stuff for my car is impossible to buy. And when it is made, Stellantis puts such a large nut on the intellectual property that it makes the part almost unobtainable. Logo nameplate script for my charger are $70 a piece. It's a piece of pot metal that's chromed and it's 70 bucks. It's a $5 part. But because Stellantis has the copy, you know, has the intellectual property to the charger, they'll do it. And even when they get rid of the brands, they will still have that intellectual property. So good luck with this. This is, this is, this company is terrible. Don't buy their products. Stay away from them. Please, dear God, stay away from them. They do nothing. They do nothing to for enthusiasts. They don't care about American enthusiasts. They don't care about our what about quality and they don't care about you the consumer just look at the recalls and how they don't fix them so you know with that i hope you got something from this of course i want to hear from you comment below on on these appliances uh, i always find the comments quite entertaining um you know i i and i will you know we'll address so i i said in my last video that you know the u.s market is very important and it's it's the largest for you know, quality cars. Uh, oh, China. China is a market that is built for Chinese, the Chinese government and Chinese people. The foreign manufacturers cannot make money in China because you have to do business with the Chinese government, the CCP, and they will steal your intellectual property all day long. The U.S. market is the market that they want to be in. That's why we have three Formula One races in the United States. There's a reason for that. Ferrari, this is their market. Literally, this is their market. Every other market is secondary. The U.S. market, that's why they have a, a U.S., always a U.S.-based uh, model. So this, this Stellantis screwing this up is pretty impressive. So, yeah, I want to love to hear your comments. Uh, of course, if you got something from this, like it. If you didn't get something from this, well, thanks for watching to hear if you like car stuff, and I will do more stuff on my old cars, but I, this is just nuts. Um, you subscribe, and if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get other channels that do similar stuff to mine. That's the way it works, and it doesn't cost you anything. It's free. I love it. So <clears throat> with that, thank you very much. And if you have a cool, cool old classic car or a cool new car, <clears throat> sports car, take it out because you will make someone's day, including your own. And I'll catch you down the road.